some special guests here this evening. Um, I'd like to start this evening with Bill Wagner and John Cooper. Uh, John Cooper is the president and a longtime member, longtime vice president of Niagara Military Affairs Council, and Bill Wagner is now his assistant. Gentlemen, you have the floor. I want to make sure the mic is on. Testing one, two. <laughs> uh, thank you, Supervisor Cliff. Uh, town board members, appreciate it. Uh, Matt Brooks, Kathy, good to see you both. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to give a short briefing, and then I know Mr. Cooper would like to say a couple of things. So I want to start off by thanking the town board and uh, certainly the Wheatfield taxpayers for the generous support of NIMAC and uh, ask that you continue to consider us in your budget for the future. Uh, we know that Wheatfield has a strong history of supporting the military, both past and present, and we appreciate that. NIMAC's mission has never been more important. This small group of all-volunteer uh, an organization has stood tall over the years, telling the story of the Air Force Reserve Station to the political and military leaders as they come and go, and aligning the base's capabilities to the needs of the Air Force as the fight evolves. We all owe a huge debt of gratitude to Chairman John Cooper and the late Merrill Lane for their tireless contributions over the past 22 years, keeping this space not only open, but viable today and into the future. That being said, now is not the time to become complacent and let, our, our, and let our guard down. This installation is always vulnerable to the BRAC or base realignment and closure, and we must stay vigilant at all times. I want to give you just a, a brief update on both air wings. I want to talk just quickly about economic impact, and then I'll close with uh, some information about the air show. In regards to the 914th, uh, as you may remember, the 914th Air Wing uh, was flying the C-130H2 models, and they recently transitioned to an air refueling wing, now flying the KC-135R tankers. There are five aircraft on the ramp currently, and we expect the three additional planes to show up here in the coming weeks. The wing also just welcomed a new installation commander. We, uh, we had a chance to meet with Colonel Mark S. Larson, uh, and we are very excited to look forward to him, and he replaces the retiring Colonel Brian S. Bowman. Last week, actually just a couple days ago, Mr. Cooper, myself, Tom Keogh, had a chance to go in to um, meet Major General Flournoy, who's the Chief of Staff for U.S. Transcom, and General Everhart, four-star commander of the Air Mobility Command at Scott Air Force Base. Uh, and our objective there was to highlight the 914th major initiatives. The three that I want to highlight for you are these. To obtain a KC-135 flight simulator, uh, we have the building currently uh, finished and Senator Schumer is fighting hard with us to achieve this goal. Uh, we expect to hopefully down the road replace the fuel farm storage tank that was removed back in 2006 due to environmental concerns. And we are also, we talked to General Everhart about potentially obtaining new KC-135 or additional, I shouldn't say new because they are older airplanes, but additional KC-135 aircraft as they become available. Uh, if you know anything about the refueling mission, the KC-46 is the new plane coming on board, and as those come on, they will displace the 135s. The, currently, the Air Force has no plans on uh, removing any of the tankers except for the KC-10s, but the 135s and the 46s are the future of the Air Force refueling mission. These are really important objectives, and uh, they were well received by Air Force leadership, and it's a great example of the type of information NIMAC can provide and the value that we bring to the table. In regards to the 107th, the 107th attack wing commanded by Robert Kilgore, Colonel Robert Kilgore, they are now a fully functional MQ-9 Reaper unit flying missions around the globe right here from the Air Reserve Station. It's amazing to think about the intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance capabilities that these dedicated men and women bring to the fight right here in our backyard. Currently, we are working with the 107th on a, a couple of things. The major one is to achieve the LRE status, and that stands for Launch and Recovery Element, which will allow them to bring and land, uh, launch and land MQ-9s right here at Niagara. This also involves obtaining a certificate of authorization, that's a COA from the FAA, to operate in civilian airspace and a ground control station with line of sight antennas to properly uh, allow for takeoff and landing procedures. Additionally, we continue to advocate for new high-tech missions that will take advantage of the broadband upgrades and other new facilities recently completed at the airbase. In regards to economic impact, specific to the town of Wheatfield, there are 129 residents working at the base. 
This does not include the Army, the Military Entrance Processing Center, or MEPS, or the civilian jobs. It's also important to note that these numbers do not include any businesses that may have contracts for worker services at the facility. With all the current and anticipated construction going on, I'm certain there are a number of businesses that directly benefit from the base as well. The base has an annual economic impact of around $160 million, and I'm sorry, it's actually closer to $200 million, uh, and is the largest employer in Niagara County hosting upwards of 3,000 jobs. There's no question that without the air base, we would not have the Niagara Falls International Airport. The NFTA and the Air Force work jointly together providing services such as snow removal, runway maintenance, fire crash rescue, that would all be too costly for either one to maintain on their own. For this reason alone, it's easy to see how important the base is to our area. Speaking of economic impact, the Thunder of Niagara Air Show, Gil, to your question earlier, will return June 9th through 10th, 2018, featuring the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds. The award-winning air show is honored to be a 70th anniversary Air Force Reserve celebration site. We will welcome Lieutenant General Marianne Miller and a host of other activities and dignitaries that week as part of the festivities. Much more to follow on that. The show, in general, anticipates over 100,000 people to walk through our gates. And although I cannot divulge any information at this time, we do expect to emphasize the thunder in Thunder of Niagara. Stay tuned for some exciting announcements on that. Thank you again for your time and your continued support of the Niagara Military Affairs Council. It is truly appreciated. And uh, now Mr. Cooper would like to say a couple of things. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Um, as usual, he's doing a, doing a great job. It's interesting to note that uh, the leadership of NIMAC over the last uh, 22 years has always been uh, under residence of this town. And uh, certainly the... Uh, uh, the support from this town has been there from, from day one, and we appreciate that. But the reason I wanted to come tonight um, is uh, to give a special thanks to Bob Cliff. Uh, he's been on our board the last eight years representing the towns in the, uh, Niagara County, and we really appreciate you being there. I um, was just going through some pictures from uh, our last air show, and I have a picture of you wiping off all the seats out there first thing in the morning. So, no. That was my job. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just glad you don't have a picture of me changing shirts when Holly gave me the shirt that wouldn't fit my grandson. Yeah, well, you know, I there's some pictures I won't talk about, but um, that one in particular just shows uh, a servant leadership uh, that you offer and have offered this town. And as a resident here, I've appreciated your leadership. And certainly with the Niagara Military Affairs Council, we have appreciated having you there. Uh, you're there all the time, and, and therefore it's all along the way. So thank you very much, Bob. Thank you much, John. Okay. Gentlemen, thank you. thank you. Our next guest this evening uh, has a very interesting tale to tell. His name is Eddie Collins. He's here with Trish Gray. Uh, Eddie, would you like to get up and tell us your tale? I'm sure that most of you have seen some strange things going on at the back of the Summit Mall, and Eddie's going to explain it. Good evening and thank you for having us. Um, this is in follow-up to regarding an updated letter of intent to the town of Wheatfield, New York, from the upcoming independent feature film, The True Adventures of Wolf Boy, for your consideration regarding filming in the Summit Mall parking lot from 918 to 927. Thank you, Mr. Cliff, Town Supervisor, Town of Wheatfield. And we're sending this to Cynthia Potts, who's representing the ownership of the mall and Niagara County Sheriff's Office. In follow-up to your email below, we would very much, <coughs> we would be very delighted to attend the meeting tonight. Here we are. If outside guests were allowed to attend, Eddie and Trish would attend if this was an open meeting, as we'd be happy to address any questions and, make, and want to make our best efforts to receive the permission to continue our filming activities at the Summit Mall this Friday, September the 22nd, 2017, from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. Our day would start at 3 p.m. In follow-up to your question below, our specific reasons for requesting this special waiver to please allow us to continue filming on Friday, 11 to 2. One, our filming will be contained on private property in the Summit Mall parking lot with express permission in writing by ownership. 
Our filming will not be loud and our presence will not be disturbing local residents in the immediate vicinity of the Summit Mall and our set is remote and is surrounded by woods and not located in the immediate vicinity of the residential street. We will be filming under the supervision of local law enforcement as we are requesting a police presence to be with us to film the controlled burn in the parking lot. We'll be filming under the supervision of Burkholz Fire Company and the, the second fire company I was told tonight, the free, uh, is it Freehold? Free Frontier? Frontier, thank Frontier. you. Frontier. And the New York State Licensed Special Effects Supervisor, so the control burn scenes are in compliance with New York State and federal mandates for safety while filming a control burn on set. These specific scenes scheduled for overnight Friday have to be filmed during nighttime hours. They are scripted to make place at night and cannot be moved to take place during daylight hours. We're filming in cooperation and support of the Buffalo Niagara Film Commission, Tim Clark and Rich Wall, who are CC'd on the letter, and thank you, Tim, for joining us tonight. For the foregoing reasons, we may, we, may we please request a special waiver to be allowed to continue filming the scheduled scenes of Control Burn Overnight in Summit Mall parking lot on Friday, September the 22nd. 11P to 2A. We're available at your convenience to address any questions. And this is coming from Trish Gray, who is the location manager and the production supervisor. Um, that letter was basically written when we got a, uh, a response from Mr. Cliff, Supervisor Cliff, in regards to the town noise law um, letter that he wrote to us. Trish, it looks like our town noise law gives me the authority to issue a special need permit for noise. I would have to state the reasons for the permit and state the circumstances for approval. We have a meeting on Monday evening. I can review this law with our board and attorneys so we are on the same page. Um, we have a letter that we're going to drop off to the neighbors. Of the f I'm not sure exactly how many homes there are. I would say two football fields away behind us. Yeah, and there's there are apartment buildings. Apartment so there's building. usually four per building okay. for individual residences. There are a few in the background as well. So as usual, I mean, we're very used to dropping neighborhood letters before we come into places. We hadn't done it before today starting filming, but now we would drop this off tomorrow just to address the Friday night filming. Okay. Um, I'd love to open up to the floor, open up to the group if there are any further questions please yeah, just to let everybody be aware I have talked to the board already that apparently the law gives me the authority to grant the permit for the extra time involved here uh, but before I grant that authority if there's anybody on the board any of the gentlemen have a concern that you'd like to bring up uh, please feel free to bring it up now or you can bring it up after me it is sort of exciting to see a a film going on here. I'm looking forward to uh, Wolf Boy. And just to add to it, we had 350 uh, volunteer extras today that and came in. I think 351. <laughs> and I think they had a good time. We'll see how many show back tomorrow. But um, you certainly picked good weather. Oh, it's, it's very good weather. Yeah. Is there anybody on the floor that has? an opinion or wishes to say anything or concerns about this. Eddie, by the way, the chief of the Frontier Fire Department is a gentleman in the black shirt. You might want to say hello. Okay, if nobody has any comments, uh, we will make that decision and you'll know tomorrow morning. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for having us. Right. Thank you for coming. Brian, do we have anybody else? Good evening. Uh, Good evening. We just wanted to, uh, the members of St. Johnsburg and Frontier Fire Department from our recent convention, we wanted to say thank you to the town board for uh, your support in this year's convention. Um, everybody that attended had a really good time, um, didn't have any major issues. Um, but we could never do it without the town uh, participation. And uh, we have the picture that was taken of the town board for the uh, program book, one made for the town. And then Bruce has uh, program. the program books for each one of them. Really appreciate it. It was a rather unique thing to have two different fire companies putting this on in one town. And it worked out very well from everything we could see.
So when's the next time it's coming back to Wheatfield? 2020. 2020. Well, it's just around the corner. Yep. So we'll be back again. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Brian, anybody else? Brian there? Brian disappeared. Nobody else. Anybody want to speak on any subject? If not, then we'll move on. Uh, for the record, four members are present. Art uh, Gerbeck is out of town on business. Um, we do have approval of minutes. Approval of the minutes were from the September 7th meeting. Do I have a motion to approve these minutes? Second. Moved by Larry, second by Gill. Anything anybody wishes to change? If not, then all in favor of approving signify by stating aye. 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 Any opposed? That's true. Uh, our bill pay is $138,213.62. That is for vouchers 2017-67. 1677 through 1746. I need a motion to pay these bills. So moved. I need a second? Second. Motion by Gill. <coughs> Are there any bills that anybody wishes to hold? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Paul, anything going on in Highway? Actual pipes themselves are right underneath the roadway, aren't they? Uh, the grates are right on the edge of the roadway. Yeah, the I guess right I, right I assume the, the pipe was underneath the grates, maybe not. Matt writes excellent letters, so that would be good. specifics with Matt to get a proper letter out. I'll make the motion that you send that letter <laughs> for your request. I'll second it. Mm -hmm. I'd like to add in it to that, Bob. I talked to several residents over the summer. Yep. I know we had a lot of rain this summer from Holmeyer Road to the, to the boulevard in that area. That when it rains now, the water is building up and it's not taking it. The water is coming out of the pipes in between the houses now as we get a heavy rain. Uh, and I wonder if this is affecting Willow Lake. Just being plugged.
I'd also like to add to that motion to a letter to go to uh, State Senator Rob Ward about it. Copy to Ward. Gil, you're talking about yes. a copy to Ward? Okay. I'll change the motion. Okay, anything further? If not, all in favor of sending this letter signify by stating aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, let's approve. So, um, Paul, if you can get together with Matt on specifics. Yeah, fine. Okay, anything else for Paul? Uh, we had talked about the folks from Seacoat going to Jarrett Drive and Dewey Court. I went there this weekend. It doesn't look like they got there. You need to borrow this? Okay. Uh, the w weather's certainly good. It should be able to be done. The water sewer, Rich? Mike, recreation. A couple of things going on at the youth center. Our Nerf nights are back. We opened up last Friday. We got one going on tonight, and again on Friday, September 29th. We also have our boot camp and Zumba classes going on. Um, Boot camps are on Mondays and Thursdays, and the Zumbas are also on Thursdays. Um, boys and Girls Basketball Clinic, that's going to start October 16th for the girls, October 18th for the boys. That's a six-week instructional clinic that we run each year, and then we'll have a league that starts in January. And the last thing I got is our senior dance, October 7th. October 7th? Coming up soon. Soon. Real soon. Anything else for Mike? Thank you. Uh, seniors, Arlene. I think it's Jim and Joyce Cheat. I'm sure it is. Yeah. We'll see if it is. Okay. okay, next would be Wendell. I think this evening we have uh, a project that we've been working on for probably a year now. We've had two years, uh, numerous meetings at the task force level. We've had, I think, three public information meetings here. We are very close to getting this done. We've actually held a public hearing. Uh, this actually could be acted upon this evening if we wish, but Drew is going to present the rezoning of Niagara Falls Boulevard. It's such an important project, we want to make sure we get it right. Thank you for that introduction. Again, Drew Riley with Wendell. Uh, do you have in your packets tonight a memo kind of going over what the supervisor said that we spent the last two years? We didn't rush this. We met with the public three times. We met with the town board, planning board, task force. Uh, some of the focus groups, et cetera, to make sure we knew what all the concerns are. The original intent was to look at the Niagara Falls Boulevard Overlay Zoning District, um, which is a local zoning law which controls whatever the zoning is along the boulevard, <laughs> controls uh, design issues, et cetera. 
uh, we also we made uh, changes to that to that law. Uh, the other thing was looking at the actual physical zoning of the of, of along Niagara Falls Boulevard, and you have in your packet tonight the maps we presented at the public hearing and to the public information meeting, which shows uh, the proposed zoning changes, all the zoning changes along the boulevard. Uh, we received some input on that, and this map represents what was presented at the public hearing and still stands today as what we're recommending for the rezoning along the boulevard. Um, the overlay also includes an area um, where that overlay uh, m is in place. We have proposed a change in the, in the location of the overlay, and that map is also included in your packet. Uh, so that map shows where the overlay district, as it goes along the boulevard, we try to include most of the properties that all front the boulevard. Well, they are all the properties, but some of the properties were extremely deep. We didn't put the overlay all the way back to the back end of the, of the property. Presently, the overlay zoning, I believe, goes 500 feet back from the, from the, from the road now to inc incorporate the entire property. So that map is also, and that was what was presented with some minor changes after the public hearing. We did receive some public input and made some changes to that overlay uh, map. In your packet, you also have the map that is on the town's website right now, which is the town unofficial zoning map. It's a GIS map that illustrates the current zoning in the town, shows the overlay districts, shows the uh, airport overlay, all those things is your zoning map. That is not the official zoning map of the town. The zoning map of the town is in the building department and is represented by 40 or 50, I believe, maps that are your old assessment maps that were hand marked up over the years, over the last 20 years. We are also, as we said at the public hearing, proposing to adopt that GIS map that is on your website as the official zoning map of the town with the changes proposed in here. That map you have does not show those changes because that's what's on the website. If you, once you pass that law, that map will be changed to show these changes, and then that map becomes the official zoning map of the town. Um, pretty much all towns use the GIS parcel maps from the county as, as your official zoning map, so that would become the official zoning map of the town. So uh, as the supervisor mentioned, you could act on this tonight. You could further review the documentation and act on it at your next meeting, um, but we're ready to move forward after two years and getting as much input as possible and making sure it represented what the town wanted to do, uh, the proposal there tonight. I've worked with the town attorney. He is, we have uh, resolutions written if you wanted to do that tonight. Uh, you would act on seeker, and you would act on, obviously, the approval of the two laws, A, the zoning map law, and B, the amendment of the overlay district. We have done the county referral. The county had no, no problems with our proposed changes, and we did a coordinated review under seeker and really got very little comment. Basically, they're saying it's your law, it's your, uh, your decision. Those other regulatory agencies don't have any comment because they don't have any regulatory power. Any questions of me? Uh, you mentioned that everything that touched the boulevard was going to be commercial, yet at Oppenheim Park it's not. Correct, correct. We, we did, not. as a matter of fact, um, not all the properties were changed to commercial. There were some that had outstanding issues with them. For example, the first, I'll give another one, the first three properties as you enter the town on the, on the left side of the road as you enter town, uh, those three properties are going to residential because they were called for as residential in the town's local waterfront revitalization plan. And as you mentioned, another outlier would be uh, the Oppenheim par uh, Zoo Park, uh, the Oppenheim Park, excuse me, it's not a zoo anymore. Uh, the county park and the property adjoining that are all under deed restrictions. They have to remain the way they are, so it made no sense to rezone them. A couple other outliers, too, along there, if you notice. But most of the property was currently zoned commercial or, for example, like the uh, property where the uh, town uh, water storage tank uh, is, that property was zoned commercial. We changed, I mean, was zoned residential. I think it was zoned for multifamily residential, we change that to commercial if and when ever in the future that the town would abandon that property. I don't see that happening in, the, in any time in the near future, but we wanted to show clearly that it's on commercial. It's your major commercial area in your town, uh, and it must be properly maintained that way. Any other questions? You said you could act on this tonight. You ha have seen it for the last two years, or you could wait another meeting and act on it the next meeting. Either way, it would not be a problem. So with the board, gentlemen, anything?
Actually, because of the nature of what we're doing here, is there anybody on the floor that wishes to ask questions or speak on this issue? Okay. I have extra copies. Drew, thank you very much. You're welcome. Would you, the board, like me to stay around for in case there's questions later or not? It doesn't look like there's any questions. Okay. Uh, Jim is here. I've been involved in the project right along too. Right. It's so if, to if you need anything from me, let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Drew. Thanks for coming. Uh, Tim? I get to continue the show here. This goes under other business. <laughs> uh, we have a couple things on our agenda this evening. Uh, the first of which is our planning board summary, and this is from the one meeting that we've had so far in September. The second meeting is actually this coming Wednesday. Our meeting, uh, our first meeting is September 6th, and on that agenda, our first item was a site plan for Nicoletti Self Storage. The applicant at this location proposes to construct three buildings to house a total of 150 storage units of various sizes. In addition, 65 designated spaces of various sizes would be constructed outside for boat and RV storage. The 4.8 acre M1 zone parcel is located on the southeast corner of Lockport Road and Walmore Road and would have two gated entrances, one from each adjacent road. The project will be built in two phases and would require a special use permit. The applicant was advised of items to include an address with their next submittal, including landscaping and screening. The planning board scheduled a public, hear I'm sorry, a public hearing for the special use permit on September 20th, 2017 at 7.05 p.m. The planning board also declared lead agency status and moved to initiate a coordinated review under Seeker. But no other action was taken on that project. The next item was a site plan, which is for the small world daycare. A lot of these you've heard me talk about a couple times because I've been back to the planning board a few times. Uh, this one, the applicant proposes to construct a 1,900-square-foot addition to the existing building located at 3793 Commerce Court. The applicant was advised of items to include in their next submittal, including fire advisory board and fire department rule of their, of their project and proposed grading. It was determined that the proposed action is a Type 2 action under Seeker, since it's less than a 4,000-square-foot construction or expansion, and that no further environmental review is required. No action was taken. The next item was a, a sketch plan for a Growy commercial building. The applicant proposes to construct a 6,250 single-story building and associated parking at 6919 Ward Road for commercial use. The applicant was advised of items to include with their formal site plan submittal, including restrictions on use at that location by the current RC zoning, potential wetlands, and floodplains. No action was required or taken. The last item on the agenda that evening was a rezoning for Woodlands Patio Homes. That's in Forest Parkway. The applicant proposes to rezone approximately 46 acres of land in the Woodlands Corporate Center expansion from M1 to PUD. The majority of the PUD will include the construction of 48 patio homes, but there will also be an area along Shawnee Road west of the railroad tracks reserved for future commercial development. The PUD proposed no increase in density and maintains in excess of the required 25% open space. Each 46 foot by 62 foot patio home lot would have a 40 foot setback, which is the same as a standard town residential lot, and will have a minimum of 20 feet in between homes. The planning board advised the town board that the proposed plan meets the town requirements for a PUD, but that the proposed use is not necessarily in line with the town's comprehensive plan, which designates this area as light industrial. No other action was taken. And that is our summary for that meeting. Are there any questions on that? Uh, that HUD request, that is not coming to us yet, is it? Or is, it? is that the next step? The next step will be for that to come to, uh, to the town board. They'll complete their um, application and their seeker form. Um, so the, their next step would be to present to the town board. They have not done detailed plan design. They've really just been focusing all this time on coming up with a sketch that accurately represents what they want to do. Um, it would now be up for the town board to take a look at that and see if that's uh, something that they feel is good for that area. And if so, you can start a coordinated review under seeker for that as well. Tim, you said that the change would be from industrial to residential? 
Well, it'd be an industrial to a planned unit development, or PUD. How much industrial do we have in the town, <coughs> roughly? How, how much actual industrial use is in there? Well, how much do we have in the town? Uh, I, I don't know that use off <laughs> the top of my head, other yeah. than we uh, in the town. Probably more than any other town as far as industrial goes. If you have the Indicon, you have all along Liberty Drive, you have several buildings out on Lockport Road, and there is industrial there, and then there is industrial at Commerce Parkway and the Woodlands. So there, there's actually a fair amount. When you look around the county at other towns, I don't know, maybe the town of Lockport has that. That so could be Nicoletti's uh, storage. They're going to have to go to the zoning board for an area variance, variance on that? Uh, they don't need an area variance. They need a special use permit. That question on the patio home. That would be 48 new patio homes? Yes. Now, my one concern would be, I don't know how, but the traffic coming off of uh, Fort Parkway on the Shawnee. Mm -hmm. That section of Shawnee Road, certain times of the day, you don't want to drive on that road. You don't want to get, you don't want to come, you have to make a left or a right hand turn out of Forest Parkway because it's just too busy. At what point in time is someone going to say that they need a signal right there that controls traffic? Well, 40, 40 more dwellings seems like that would be a significant amount to add, but I don't. Mm -hmm. We would, we would have the ability to be able to ask for a traffic study of the process at some point. It, it would also, through the coordinated review process under Seeker, get sent to the state DOT for Shawnee Road. Um, and I'm of the understanding that when the original Seeker was passed for that, there was something in there that once the development was reached a 50% or greater uh, saturation that the traffic study would have to be re-reviewed and, and updated to see how it had filled out with what kind of businesses. So I imagine that might be something that would come up during the coordinated review on this if it was to go that direction. But it would come to us to rezone it first from industrial to residential, correct? Correct. Industrial to public. Right, to, P to PUD. The PUD, um, a, a PUD, uh, the requirements right. in the town require different aspects. Minimum size is a 20 acres. This is 46. and requires um, to have some kind of commercial component, which is why they've added on the, the vacant land that's across Forest Parkway from the gas station right at the beginning when you come in off of Shawnee. They put that area on, in, included that in the PUD as future commercial development. What that will allow you to do is to spell out as we refine the PUD what exactly type of commercial activity you'd want in there. You may not want automotive because it's going to be right next to residential in there. You can be more uh, particular about what's allowed in that. And that would be the same amount of acreage? It's, it's actually 46 acres now that they've added that on there is what they would be rezoning. So when do you do the traffic study? After you rezone or before you rezone? Well, Seeger would have to be done before you approve a rezoning. So it would be during the seeker process okay. that the town could request that if the DOT does not request that themselves. There you go. Do you have anything else to uh, Yeah, we actually have a couple of other things. Um, the next item on our agenda we have is the 2017 I&I &I corrective work. As you're aware, each year the Nyer County Sewer District number one reimburses its member towns up to $20,000 for activities uh, related to the identification or removal of inflow and infiltration sources. We call it I&I. &I. Uh, we've been working with Rich Donner this year to um, review potential activities, and, and what we've come up down to is uh, a package to clean and televise approximately 9,900 feet of 8-inch sanitary sewer that runs down Slazaric Road and portions of Talamine Road. Uh, this is an area that Rich has been uh, monitoring and has an effect on all the daisy-chained uh, pump stations that are downtown Line Road. So we're proposing a package to uh, prepare quotes um, to go through and get that televised and clean. Are these pressure sewers that you want a camera, or are these 
gravity. No, it's, it's gravity. It's eight inch gravity sewer. They're the ones that they'll feed the pump, feed the pump station. So trying to cut down on continual pumping of the pump station, we, we go and look and see if we've got any sources of groundwater or rainwater that are coming into those pipes. They shouldn't be. So your motion isn't to pass the project. Your motion is to allow you to design the project. And Correct. It's it's to it's to put together the quote package so that we can get it out and get quotes in. Um, it's, it's underneath the state procurement amount, so we don't have to do a full bid book and bid package for that. So that's what we've typically done in the past with Rich. Um, it's basically putting together the specs, <coughs> and bless you, and the mapping and the scope of work to be done, time frames for it to be done, attaining the quotes, reviewing them, and making recommendations to the town, and um, going through the contract paperwork. Pretty much when they get out and start doing their work, they're pretty self-sustaining. Any questions they have, Rich readily answers. So there really isn't any need for um, work during construction. Okay, that's actually in our motions. So that is a motion that's in there. Um, I'm going to go on to our last item on the agenda, which is another professional services uh, proposal. And this is in relation to, we've had it in the town board agenda the past, I think at least over the summer, a couple of times. Uh, the $200,000 grant that the town has got for putting permanent generators at our sanitary pump stations. We've been working with the water sewer department and the grant writer to help secure that grant and, and now that we've had that we've secured it, uh, we have a proposal in to basically prepare, prepare the design documents for installing those generators. Um, kind of similar to the one we just did on Clesson Drive except that these aren't in buildings, these are outdoor enclosures with um, sound attenuation to them so they're mounted on a concrete pad outside and it's at five different stations actually the ones along town line road which hopefully we'll find some infiltration uh, when we do our I and I work on that as well so these would be for the five generator pads along town actually there's four of them along town line road and the fifth one is we call it the Niagara Falls Boulevard one that's the one that's in the back of the Aldi's that was recently constructed this is estimated somewhere around a $260,000 project, and you're seeking $20,500 to get us up to big bid, up to bid. Correct. And that's again on our motions later on. Right. Anything else? That's all I have, unless there's any questions. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. And we do believe we are up to motions, Matt. Okay, following from what uh, Tim from Wendell indicated, First one is one of the motions from Wendell. <coughs> to authorize Wendell to provide professional services for the Town of Wheatfield 2017 INI corrective work in accordance with their proposal letter dated September 14, 2017 for an estimated time and expense fee of $3,500. I'll make that motion. Motion by Larry. Do we have a second? I'll go ahead and second. Anything on the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Uh, next motion again from <coughs> Wendell, as Tim mentioned, the motion to authorize Wendell to provide professional services for the town of Wheatfield Pump Station Permanent Generator Installation Project in accordance with their proposal letter dated September 14, 2017, for a lump sum fee of $20,500. Do we have a, s a motion? So moved. Moved by Randy. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Gill. Anything on this question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Uh, next motion from the Highway Department to authorize Paul Siegman, Superintendent of the Highway Department, to accept the lowest quote received for the removal of 11 trees located in town. Uh, owned right away on various roads within the town of Wheatfield. Six companies were contacted to provide quotes and only two responded the lowest responsible quote received and to be authorized herein is from Andy's Tree Service Inc. in the amount of $19,700. This motion authorizes the town to accept said quote and authorizes the quote to be accepted and the work to be performed. Anybody? I'll go ahead and make the motion. Need a second to proceed. I'll second. Paul, you feel comfor comfortable with the numbers that you got? Or
Do I have a second? These 11 are haphazard that we shouldn't really wait on. I mean, they're dead now. Either dead or hanging over whether they're going to cause a problem or yet. I mean, that's how I hope. I mean, I see it dead. That's what they say. I'm not going to stop supervising them. I don't want to do this again. And the last year, it seems like we had twice as many fires as the year before. Yeah, it's just because of the fire season. 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 Yeah, it's just because of the f
And whereas in accordance with Part 617 of the implementing regulations pertaining to Article 8 State Environmental Quality Review Act, speaker, and the Environmental Conservation Law, the Wheatfield Town Board has conducted an environmental review of the revised code Niagara Falls Boulevard Overlay District, and whereas the town referred this action to the Niagara County Planning Board and received no adverse comments, and whereas a public hearing was held regarding this code amendment on June 14, 2017, and comments from the public were noted, and whereas pursuant to municipal home rule law, the town board is proposing to adopt this zoning code amendment by enacting a local law. Now, therefore, it is resolved that the Wheatfield Town Board, in accordance with the State Environmental Quality Review Act, has determined the proposed amendment of Chapter 200 zoning by amending Section 200-20.3, Niagara Falls Boulevard Overlay District will not adversely affect the natural resources of the state and or the health, safety, welfare of the public, and is consistent with the social and economic considerations, and therefore issues the attached speaker negative declaration in accordance with 617.7 of the speaker regulations, and be it further resolved that the supervisor is authorized to sign the environmental assessment form, which will act as the negative declaration. Anybody? I'll make the motion. Anybody second? Second. Second by Larry. This is the speaker part of what Drew was talking about at the beginning of the meeting. This is only the speaker part. It's not passing the whole project. Anything further on the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's approved. Next motion, again, town board, town engineer, and town attorney from, whereas the town code contains and specifies the local laws and ordinances of the town of Wheatfield, and the town of Wheatfield zoning map represents the zoning of land within the town, and whereas the town of Wheatfield, through its board map, its board, committees, and town consultants, have prepared recommendations for amendments to the town zoning map based on conformance to the comprehensive plan, implementing recommendations of the comprehensive plan, and resolving site-specific issues and problems, and has recommended these amendments to the town board, whereas pursuant to municipal home rule law, a proposed local law, to be known as proposed local law number six of 2017, has been presented to the Wheatfield town board for potential amendment of the zoning map of the town of Wheatfield to adopt the town's GIS map as the official zoning map of the town, and whereas the town board conducted a public hearing on June 14, 2017, regarding the proposed local law number six of 2017, and whereas in accordance with part 617 of the implementing regulations pertaining to article eight, speaker of the state environmental conservation law, the Wheatfield town board has issued a speaker negative declaration regarding local law six of 2017, and whereas the proposed local law was referred to the Niagara County planning board in accordance with general municipal law section 239-M, and the Niagara County planning board has no objections to the revision, and whereas the proposed zoning map revisions are in accordance with the town's comprehensive plan, now therefore be enacted by the town board of the town of Wheatfield, New York, local law six of 2017, amending the town of Wheatfield's zoning map as depicted on the attached map, and adopting the GIS map as the official zoning map of the town. Local law shall take effect upon filing with the office of the secretary of state of New York. Okay, I'll go ahead and make this motion. Need a second. I'll second it. Moved and seconded. It's been a long process. It would be nice to get this done with. Anybody else? If not, then all in favor signify by stating aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's approved. Okay, one more local law from the town board, town engineer, and town attorney, whereas the code of the town of Wheatfield contains and specifies the local laws and ordinances of the town of Wheatfield, and where the town has developed an amendment to the zoning chapter of the code of the town of Wheatfield, specifically the Niagara Falls Boulevard overlay district in article three, and whereas pursuant to municipal home rule law, the town board is proposing to adopt a zoning code amendment by enacting a local law number seven of 2017 as follows. Be it enacted by the town board of the town of Wheatfield, New York, that the Wheatfield town board amends its zoning code of the town of Wheatfield 
as follows, amending Chapter 200, Zoning, Article 3, District Regulations, by deleting the existing Section 200-20.3 and replacing it with the attached new section of 200-20.3, and whereas the Town Board held the required public hearing on the proposed local law on June 14, 2017, and comments from the public were received and noted, and whereas the Wheatfield Town Board has determined the proposed zoning amendment will not result in any significant negative effect on the environment and has issued a negative declaration, now therefore be enacted by the Town Board of the Town of Wheatfield, New York, Local Law, Number 7 of the year 2017, which amends Chapter 200, Zoning, Article 3, District Regulations, by deleting the existing Section 200-20.3 and replacing it with a new Section 200-20.3. And then that 20.3 looks like it's about eight pages long. That, yes, that is the new uh, Boulevard Zoning Overlay. So moved. So moved by Randy. Do we have a second? I'll second. Anything on the question? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Uh, next motion is from the uh, town clerk to accept the GC 17-001 local government records management improvement fund grant in the amount of $39,925 with field document management as the vendor as indicated in the grant application and to authorize the town supervisor and or other town officials to execute any necessary grant and contract documents. We move by Larry. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Gill. Anything on the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Next, the motion from uh, Dave Britton at uh, GHC Engineers to accept the completed PIP improvements for pavement and curb, storm sewer and drainage, sanitary sewer and water line facilities for the Aiden Estates subdivision with the following condition. Per the SWPCP prepared for Aiden Estates, the downspouts and roof leader system associated with the construction of new homes on lots 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 shall be redirected and discharged to abutting regulated wetland. The construction of the individual roof leader system for these lots shall be constructed and maintained in accordance with the approved project plans and files of building development. And additionally, the town will reserve the, the right and may require the owners of the aforementioned lots to sign a maintenance agreement and access agreement prior to issuance of a certificate of occupancy in order to assure said systems will be properly maintained. Okay, I'll go ahead and do the motion. Need a second? Second. Second by Larry. Anything on the question? Everything looks good then, Dave? Anything on the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Uh, next motion again from Dave Britton at uh, GHC Engineers. To accept the maintenance bond, public utility easements, drainage easements, conservation easement, and roadway dedication associated with the Aiden Estate subdivision. Anybody? So moved. Second. Okay, we move and second it. Anything on the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Uh, next motion from our budget director to approve the proposed contract from Municipal Solutions, Inc., dated September 10th, 2017, and to authorize the town supervisor to execute said contract, engaging Municipal Solutions, Inc., to provide financial services related to the issuance of bond anticipation notes and serial bonds if appropriate, along with other general financial services related to the issuance of debt. Do we need a 
second? Second. <clears throat> Anything on the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Uh, next motion again from the budget director to approve the request of the budget director as the Mongol to change the previously scheduled town of Wheatfield public town of Wheatfield budget public hearing date of October 16, 2017, to November 6, 2017, which be held at the same time and location. So moved. We'll moved by Randy. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Larry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> And I believe uh, you that had, you had one supplemental. That is the one. We've done this. We've done this. Uh, we've done the supplemental. Those were included in here. That's what I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have the one supplemental here. Which was the one we just did for changing the date. Yeah, I think so. And, and then the other one is. And then the other one was the municipal solutions, which we did just before that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. There is one other motion I'll jump in at this time. Uh, we have a department head meeting, a work session every year. We'd like to schedule that for Wednesday, October 11th at 5 o'clock p.m. here in this room. Um, and all department heads are expected to attend. You wouldn't all have to attend at the same time. Uh, Ed can schedule that out if you want to schedule that out for them. Well, we talked about 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock is good for everybody. We'll call it 5 o'clock. That will be in this room. It is a public work session. Uh, we'll give the board the opportunity of speaking with the department heads about the, where the budget stands at that time. Um, that was the 11th, the 11th, right, Bob? October 11th yeah. at 5 o'clock p.m., and yeah. that's my motion. I'll second that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. All right. Any opposed? Okay, that's, that's approved also. So we'll move on to board member items. Councilman Hellig? Councilman Doucette. I have some correspondence from St. Johnsburg Volunteer Fire Hall. They'd like to add Jesse Williams as an active fire fighter, Cassie Landry's as an active junior firefighter, Kimberly Nur as an active firefighter, and Colin Tylett is an active junior firefighter. And I'll make them the motion for that. That's great. I'll second. Anything on the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's and that's it. Okay. Randy? I have nothing. Um, the hardship permit for Wolf Boy, unless somebody comes up with a pretty good reason for not doing it, I'll probably approve that in the morning. So uh, be a little bit late at night on Friday night shooting in flames. <laughs> there will be some burning involved, control burning involved in that session. And I believe that's all I have. Our next meeting is October 2nd at 7.30 p.m. As of right now, I guess we don't have any preliminaries. So we're back to public input. Does anybody have anything they'd like to state? Yes. Yeah. 
close on that property because I know it's uh, yes, the, uh, that closed, um, I think, uh, about a week ago. So that's final now. And the good news is we own the piece of property and it's, we'll always have access through the ditch, we'll always have access through the road when we need it. No tolls. Anybody have anything they'd like to say on any subject before the town? If nothing, then I re will request a motion to adjourn. Moved and seconded.